I call this tale The Old Tailor of Pelting Moor. <laughs> Even when he was born, Jumbo Ferrari didn't want to wear what everyone else was wearing. By the time he was 11, he was so fussy about his clothes that his mother tried to change his name to Lord Foppington. But Jumbo wouldn't let her. He took his clothes seriously. From sunglasses to sandals, hats to haversacks, he always wanted to look different. To wear clothes that other people weren't wearing. To be at the cutting edge of fashion. Have you any idea how much all this costs us, Jumbo? Mother, when you are as big a fashion icon as moi, cost is an irritating irrelevancy. To you, maybe, but not to us. So you'd have me going out in public looking like a chav? It costs money to be one of life's beautiful people. An expense, however, that is paid back by the many admiring glances I attract in the street. There was no arguing with Jumbo's vanity. He was addicted to how he looked, be it his hairstyles, his moisturising routines, or his freckles from the Flipping Frinton Freckle Factory. Sometimes his parents would point out that a life spent in thrall to vanity is a wasted one, Jumbo. But Jumbo had an answer for that. At least I don't look like you two. Better to be vain than ugly. Then, one day, he saw an advertisement in a fashion magazine for a new type of suit. The unique life suit. Mmm, the latest in bespoke craftsmanship from the old tailor of Pelting Moor. Every suit was tailored to the individual and different from every other suit in the world. Jumbo had to have it. But there was no contact address, no phone number, and surprisingly, no pelting more on the map. So he tucked the advertisement under his pillow, meaning to track down the old tailor in the morning. But that night, he had a dream. Jumbo's beloved clothes were setting themselves free. They danced across the room like an invisible boy band and threw themselves out of the window. He rushed to see where they'd landed, but there was no sign of them. And the cupboard was bare. <laughs> it was more than just a dream. My clothes! Give me back my precious clothes! The back of the wardrobe creaked open to reveal a dingy, candle-lit shop behind. And sitting on top of a large table was a bespectacled old man with the droopiest, wrinkliest skin that Jumbo had ever seen. Ah, is that Mr Ferrari? Welcome. Is this... Uh, are you who I think you are? The old tailor of Peltingmore at your service, sir. I assume you have come for a life suit. Allow me to show you a demonstration model. It shimmered like mother of pearl as it sprang to attention next to Jumbo. He longed to try it on. Be my guest. I made this one earlier. It's beautiful. And not another like it in the world. That was what Jumbo wanted to hear. He'd be one of a kind. It's so light. It's as if I wasn't wearing anything at all. Some people do say it's like wearing a second skin. I can believe it, said Jumbo, gazing at his own reflection. It makes me handsome. All of a sudden, the face of a strange boy flitted across his own. Who was that? Who? That face! Oh, somebody. Nobody. 
just the face of the person I made it from. From? For? Uh, goodness me, <laughs> slip of an old man's tongue. So, does Sir want me to make him one? Yes, of course Sir does. The old tailor of Pelting Moor measured Jumbo from head to toe, then politely asked him to uh, step out of your skin. I beg your pardon? Uh, did I not mention it? The life suit is, is unique because it's made from the wearer's own skin. So that face was the face of the boy whose skin I was wearing. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him well. I strip off the skin, which I specially preserve with unguents and oils to prevent wrinkling. Then I nip, I tuck, and I snip to achieve the final look. You're the plastic surgeon. Hardly, sir. The most skillful tailor in the world. And how do you expect me to step out of my skin? That is why we have ears, sir. In your case, quite large ones. To hide the poppers. Hold still and I'll have you out of there in a jiffy. Jumbo sat up all night and listened to the tailor working. In the morning, he could barely contain his excitement as he rushed to try on his life suit. Well, sir? <gasps> what have you done to me? You haven't recut or reshaped my skin at all. This isn't a suit. It still looks like a body. I mean, what are these, trousers or shorts? And this isn't a jacket. And what are all these wrinkles? You're wearing my skin and I'm wearing... <laughs> <laughs> You've made me into you! It's not so bad. If you go cycling, you'll have to hitch up the wrinkles on your legs with bicycle clips. Uh, oh, and, and uh, watch out in a high wind. You don't want your arm skin inflating like bat wings, <laughs> or you'll take off. But apart from that, your life won't be that much different. Won't be different? You old crook! You've stolen my beauty! Precisely. Vanity in one so young deserves wrinkles. And at my great age, I rather think I deserve a facelift. <laughs> and with that, the young <laughs> tailor of Pelting Moor vanished leaving Jumbo Ferrari to face the rest of his life, wearing an old man's saggy, baggy skin. Not so chic now, is he? <laughs> skin designed by Jumbo the Elephant. <laughs>